Hello there, this presentation is about tinnitus from the tinnituscontrolcenter.com. I'm Dr. Charles Smith Deal. My wife is Dr. Deborah Smith Deal. I'm board certified American Academy of Otolaryngology. I'm a retired otologist and otologic surgeon. I'm also a former tinnitus and hyperacusis sufferer. My wife and I are both anxiety relief specialists. I just want to mention here, I'm not going to read the slides for you. You can certainly do that. I'm going to comment on the slides as I go through them. And you have the ability to repeat the slides if something is not clear. Please feel free to come back and watch it. Tinnitus is defined as a phantom auditory perception, meaning that's a sound perceived as inside your ears or head, and the sound does not exist outside you. It's often generated in the brain but perceived as being heard in the ears. My preferred pronunciation for this word is tinnitus. Tinnitus would be spelled with an I-T-I-S, like dermatitis or arthritis would mean inflammation. The inner ear includes the cochlea, which is a snail-shelled organ lined with sensitive hair cells that receive sound vibrations and these are, are transmitted along the acoustic nerve to your brain. So your ears receive and transmit sound, but you actually interpret it or hear it in your brain. Many people refer to tinnitus as ringing in the ears, but it can be any number of sounds, like chirping or hissing or sizzling, high, low, soft, harsh, faint, Pulsatile tinnitus is a recurring thumping or swishing sound when you hear the sound of your pulse or heartbeat in your ears. Let's talk about the intensity or loudness of sounds for a moment. Non normal conversation measures about 40 to 50 decibels. A home vacuum cleaner or alarm clock would be between 65 and 85 dB or decibels. And you can read the others here. The volume of tinnitus is typically estimated as being between 20 and 40 decibels. However, when we actually measure it, it approximates 8 to 10 dB. Some people do experience very, very loud tinnitus, and that can be extremely devastating. The majority of adults with normal hearing experience occasional tinnitus, which is a high-pitched ringing in the ears. You can read the statistics here. One out of three over the age of 60 have tinnitus. Here's an interesting phenomenon. When you put people with perfectly normal hearing into a soundproof chamber, 95% of them will develop tinnitus within a matter of about five minutes. We need external sound for our ears and our hearing mechanisms to function normally. And without the external sound, the cells in our brain become so sensitive that they listen intensely for sound and they begin to hear the normal energy flow that's taking place between our cells. So any type of hearing loss may result in hearing this internal noise and we interpret that as sound, which is tinnitus. Physiologic causes, there are many, you can have a spasm of a little tiny middle ear muscle Throat muscles contract opening the eustachian tube. Your TM joint can create a pull or vibration on the eardrum. There are many physiologic causes. The most common type of tinnitus is SIT, or subjective idiopathic tinnitus. And this simply means subjective is only you can hear it, no one else does. Idiopathic means we don't know what's causing it. And tinnitus is the phantom auditory perception. People often ask, will my tinnitus ever go away? Well, in some situations, yes, it will. In others, you can reduce the intensity and, the, and train your brain to ignore the noise. This is very real. But you first have to find out what is causing your specific tinnitus. So what do you do? You don't go to a hearing aid specialist or, or someone who's not qualified to examine you and find out for sure. Uh, your family doctor cannot do this for you. You go to an otologist, an ear specialist, or an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Some causes are quickly remedied, and your doctor can tell you about that. Some medications make your ears ring, like aspirin is very common. 
some blood pressure medications especially. Your doctor will know about these, or you can go on the internet and check for yourself. Your ENT doctor will do a hearing test called an audiogram and do some additional testing of your auditory or vestibular nerves. And these concern balance as well as hearing because they're very closely related. I want to mention one specific thing. An acoustic neuroma is a non-malignant tumor that grows along the eighth cranial nerve. And it can be surgically removed. It is not a malignant tumor. It's not cancer. It's a benign tumor. But it's important to know because it gradually expands and can create lots of problems if you don't correct it. So you want to have that checked. Your doctor will probably order an MRI today of your inner ear and surrounding areas, especially if you have ringing or sound in only one ear. These tumors can often cause tinnitus, hearing loss, and or vertigo or dizziness or loss of balance. There are diseases or illnesses can also cause those same symptoms. Meniere's disease is actually a triad of three symptoms and it's the tinnitus, hearing loss, and vertigo. And this is typically treated with medications and dietary changes. Endolymphatic hydrops, EH, is the cause of Meniere's disease. And this results from an increased fluid and pressure inside the inner ear. Now the inner ear doesn't mean behind your eardrum. The inner ear is in the bone of the inner ear where the cochlea and the semicircular canals reside. Endolymphatic hydrops, in my opinion, is most often caused by an allergy or a sensitivity, not a true allergy, but a sensitivity to foods, the most common of which is wheat in our society. Occasionally corn, soy, and dairy, but wheat is a very common offender. Remember this. This can be very important for you. Other symptoms are an intermittent feeling of fullness in one ear, a fluctuating hearing loss, a hearing loss that sometimes it's worse than other days or hours. It just suddenly seems to get full and you lose the hearing, and you may or may not have dizziness with it. But as this fluid and pressure build up, the hearing goes down. And when the pressure goes down, the hearing improves. This is a classic sign of endolymphatic hydrops, which is called Meniere's disease. So after examination prove what you do not have, Many times you're told by your doctor that your tinnitus is idiopathic, meaning there's no known cause, or that it's the result of a past exposure to loud noise that damaged your hearing nerves. So you visit a specialist to find out what you don't have. You, you cannot bypass this. And your doctor may then tell you there's nothing can be done for your tinnitus. This is not, not accurate. There's a great deal that can be done. You may be told you just have to learn to live with it. Forget it. This is not true. Many ENT specialists are sadly uninformed about many things that can be done for tinnitus. They may be great doctors, but this is what they were taught. So they're wrong, and I'm going to show you what many things that you can do. Remember, you do not have to learn to live with tinnitus. A great deal can be done to reduce your suffering and to quiet that infernal noise in your head. Remember, I am an ENT specialist. I am an otologic, sur otologic surgeon. So you have to understand that you can be helped. Now, there's no magic pill or overnight cure. And how quickly you get relief will depend on you. It's going to depend on how much you want to relief and how dedicated you are to participating in your own therapy. I'm going to show you what to do. Now, a little aside, Van Gogh is said to have had tinnitus, and he cut off one ear to get rid of it. Well, it didn't work, and it won't work for you either, so don't do that. People have tried destroying the auditory nerves for people who just could not stand the noise in their head. It didn't work either. The noise is not in the, in the auditory nerves. It's in the brain. And yes, the noise is distressing. It, it makes you feel powerless sometimes. It can be very frightening, but it is also temporary and fixable. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. I want to tell you about a thing called habituation. Habituation literally means developing a habit of ignoring something. Our five senses are, you know, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. 
and we're constantly bombarded by thousands of sensations or it's a stimulus so we call multiple we call stimuli and to avoid sensory overload the brain selectively focuses on any stimulus that's worthy of your attention and it ignores the others I'm going to prove that to you in a moment by the way it is impossible for your brain to ignore any sensation that generates a fear response anything that is frightening to you a shock you cannot ignore it it's, it's hardwired into the system so just to prove it to you before I ask you this question were you aware of the shoes on your feet or the slippers how tight or loose they feel around your toes are you aware of that now of course because I called it to your conscious attention habituation again is the automatically ignoring of any stimulus that's considered non-threatening or unimportant let me ask you again are you aware of the tongue inside your mouth you weren't were you but you are now are you aware that it's rough on one side and smooth on the other I bet you just checked it didn't you because I made you aware of it so as soon as your mind concludes that the noise of tinnitus is not a threat to your health or well-being it will automatically begin to ignore the noise and that's called habituation I'm going to teach you how to use this when your mind ignores something it's the same as if it isn't there until something redirects your attention to it so the key to this is to remove the fear that's associated with the stimulus and I'm going to show you how to do this there are other treatment options and if you go to your doctor an ENT doctor you're going to find out that there are some medications there's a thing called tinnitus retraining therapy this is kind of the gold standard of therapy for patients today with tinnitus I, I frankly am not very impressed with it it was quite good uh, when it was you know first thought of and discussed and tried and many people are still using it there there are better things today in my opinion hypnosis or hypnotherapy was pretty good at one time and it, it still is under certain circumstances but very few people understand how to use it anxiety relief techniques is my own development my own technique it's an application of other therapies um, and sometimes combinations let's let's talk about them medications I'm gonna cover very quickly because I don't recommend them in, in most for most people if nothing else is available to you anti-anxiety medications may be helpful and your doctor may very well prescribe these doctors tend to love to prescribe these medications I'm not sure why Xanax is a pretty good one uh, tricyclic antidepressants such as Pamela and Elevil have been used uh, I'm not thrilled with those the SSRIs their selective serotonin uptake reinhibitors like Prozac and Paxil have helped people but these are very dangerous in my opinion I, I absolutely would not use these for tinnitus uh, they, they can cause suicide uh, there have been many cases quite honestly they've been covered up by the pharmaceutical industry of patients uh, committing suicide because they're taking Prozac especially uh, so there's some other medications but they all have dangerous side effects and they all interact with each other with foods and so I'm I'm not going to say much except you have to talk to a doctor who's familiar with those medications in order to use them now TRT or tinnitus retraining therapy will help 85 percent of the patients over a period of about 18 months it's expensive and it's just just takes forever uh, Dr. Pavel Yastrebov developed this technique when he was at the University of Maryland he's now at Emory University in Atlanta it works through habituation and it consists of two parts the use of sound therapy which I'll explain and counseling by a knowledgeable professional that's very important 12 to 18 months to achieve effectiveness I, I'm not impressed with it today hypnosis was very good at one time when is all we had it was certainly as good as any medication it was as good as TRT uh, but there's something better than that today there are very few hypnotherapists who are qualified to help you so just be be cautious about going for hypnosis uh, you may get some relaxation and some relief uh, but I, I don't use it much anymore I want to tell you a little bit about energy therapy this may be new to you so take off your blinders and look at something new that perhaps you've never heard of because it works 
Just as your body has a circulatory system for blood and lymph, we have a circulatory system for energy. It's called the meridian system. And the Asian cultures have known about this for more than 4,000 years. Here we're so smart in our Western civilization, we started looking into this about 40 years ago. Acupuncture uses this meridian system. Some of the pioneers, Dr. George Goodhart, who developed emotional stress relief, Dr. John Diamond was a psychiatrist in New York who developed acupuncture emotional system. Dr. Roger Callahan developed thought field therapy. Mr. Gary Craig developed emotional freedom techniques. Gary's done more than anybody perhaps to popularize that technique, although Dr. Callahan gave us most of the answers to the information we required. And my wife, Deb, and I have developed anxiety relief techniques, and we specifically use this for tinnitus, but we use it for other things as well to relieve any type of anxiety. So based on the earlier work of these other pioneers, we developed this, but Dr. Callahan showed us that a traumatic event can cause a disruption in that circulating energy system. Well, what does that mean? It means it stops the energy flow between cells. And he developed TFT, and it worked beautifully to remove fear. It was great for removing certain phobias or any fear, any negative emotion. Callahan also figured out that the disrupted energy causes a negative emotion to be felt. And that can be felt as anxiety, fear, frustration, panic. So the disturbed energy flow is what causes you to feel bad, causes the negative emotion, not the event itself. So Gary Craig worked with this. He worked with uh, Dr. Callahan for a while, then he developed his own technique and expanded it, did a beautiful job with EFT. And this involves a fingertip stimulation of acupressure points, which will remove the fear. And it does so by restoring the normal energy flow. It's an amazing technique. I didn't believe it when I first saw it. But after I saw it work on several hundred consecutive patients and cases, I realized that it does work. So the onset of tinnitus or the sound in your head is a traumatic event. That's scary. All of a sudden your ears start ringing or your head starts ringing or you get this clanging noise. That's frightening. And that causes a disruption in that meridian energy flow. And that causes you to feel bad. But if you can restore that energy flow, the associated anxiety and fear disappear. And remember what I said about your brain ignoring any sound that doesn't generate a fear response? As soon as the fear goes away, your conscious mind will begin to ignore the noise of tinnitus. It's automatic. So that's what we do. We remove the fear and we take advantage of the fact that your brain will automatically ignore anything that doesn't generate a fear response and it will start to ignore the sound of your tinnitus. This is the most amazing method I have ever seen for this and other things. So the habituation or ignoring this noise begins within minutes of removing the fear. Not weeks or months or years, within minutes it begins. Now some dietary things you need to know about. 90% of the people who have tinnitus also have hyperinsulinemia. This is a malfunction of your, your pancreas. This is like being pre-diabetic. So you have an increased level of insulin in your bloodstream. Most people are typically overweight. They have very poor diets. They eat too many carbohydrates. So if you have tinnitus, the first thing you want to do is to start eating a diet low in sugar and simple carbohydrates and limit your intake of caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. Also avoid MSG like crazy. That's often in Chinese food, monosodium glutamate and anything containing the artificial sweetener aspartame. Diet sodas are loaded with that. Equal is aspartame. It's one of the worst things that's ever been developed in my opinion. It's terrible for your central nervous system. Stay away from it. It also causes migraine headaches. Many migraines today are simply caused by people having too much aspartame in their diet. It's, they put it in toothpaste today. So read ingredients. Get rid of aspartame. Keep a food diary in relation to your symptoms. If your noise gets worse, or your hearing gets worse, or you get dizzy, or you're feeling unstable, or you get this feeling of fullness, 
immediately write down everything you've eaten in the last 72 hours, every item, everything you drank, and then eliminate certain foods. If you see things that recur every time you have these symptoms, you're going to find that certain foods are on that list that you wrote down. Get rid of them. And I don't mean just cut back on them. Get rid of them completely from your diet for several weeks. Wheat is the most common. There is no question about this. But get rid of all grains from your diet for three weeks. Eliminate anything that has wheat in it. Read your labels. That's bread, flour, beer, gravy, pastries. I had one young woman I was working with that she just had a terrible time. She was having trouble getting rid of uh, dealing with her anxiety for many things. It turned out she came home every evening from work and to relax she had a beer. She had no idea it had wheat in it. So wheat is a very common offender. You've got to get it out of your diet. I cannot overstress that. The other thing is sound enrichment. Your, your ears like to have sound around you. They like to listen for sound at all times. So put some sound for them to hear. Enrich your environment with, with sound constantly. Something pleasant. Play a CD that's pleasant. Get a recirculating fountain where you hear the splashing water. That's ideal. Or buy an electronic sound generator from you know, uh, one of the stores that specialize, Radio Shack has them. Uh, all the specialty stores have them. Uh, an electric fan, anything that creates sound for your ears to hear will allow you to start ignoring the noise of tinnitus that's inside your head. Now, loud noise over 85 decibels can be harmful to your ears. You don't want to do that. But silence is terrible when you have tinnitus. So the goals are to reduce your fear, number one, reduce the sound's volume, relieve your suffering. And then, again, once the fear is removed, your brain will automatically ignore the noise. And as distressing as it feels at the beginning, your suffering can become largely a memory. I've done it personally. I've been where you are. I know how this works. Hyperacusis is a condition where you have super hearing. And it means that there's a reduction in your threshold of comfort for sound. It's caused by an, an alteration in the sound processing system in your brain. What does that mean? It means that you have sensitive ears, that normal sound appears louder than it normally is to you. And it originates in the brain, not in the ears. The biggest problem people with hyperacusis have is developing a fear of sound. They're afraid that loud sounds will permanently damage their hearing. Now, abnormally loud sounds will damage anyone's hearing, but normal sound will not damage your hearing even when you have hyperacusis. So the tendency is to seek silence, sweet, comfortable silence. Well, that's the worst thing you can do. Your nerve cells in the brain do not do well in silence. So they attempt to recall earlier sounds, or they attempt to duplicate those sounds. And this causes tinnitus, which is a frequent companion of hyperacusis. So low levels of sound result in an increased sensitivity of hearing. So if you wear earplugs to block out normal sound, your hearing actually becomes even more sensitive, and it makes your condition worse. So begin to do without your earplugs and let normal sound in, normal conversation, normal activities. And your brain will automatically adjust this so that you can begin to get rid of your fear of sound. But keep some background sound around you at all times, a radio or a CD playing or a waterfall or fountain. So your hearing system thrives best when it's, when it's working, when it's performing its function of listening. Be careful about loud sounds over 85 decibels. Levels above 140 dB can cause your hearing to be damaged within a single exposure, like a loud gun blast. That, that can be dangerous. So to relieve hyperacusis, perfuse your environment with sound. There are many ways to do it, and I've mentioned some of them. You can read this. Increase the amount of level of sound around you and see how quickly you'll improve. This goes away when you realize there's nothing wrong with your ears, normal sounds will not damage your hearing, and you have nothing to fear. So your relief from your tinnitus is going to be self-directed mainly. Knowledge and understanding are the beginnings of relief. 
review the information provided here and follow my suggestions. Anxiety relief techniques is simple to learn and easy to perform and you do this for yourself. You practice it. I'll show you the technique in a different presentation and you can administer it yourself. And then once you learn this technique, you can also show it for others. You can help other people as well. And it's your choice. You can focus on good things in your life or focus on things that are not so good. No matter how frustrated you may feel, know that relief is at hand. Let me suggest that you express your gratitude daily for the many blessings that you already have in your life. Your family, your loved ones, a roof over your head, food in your stomach, all the good things. Focus on the good things rather than the bad things and, and develop this habit. You're training your brain what to pay attention to. And may God continue to bless you as you gain relief from your fear and suffering. You have many blessings in your life. Be grateful for them. Write them down, what I call a gratitude journal. Write these things down every day and focus on the things that you have that are wonderful. Teach yourself to ignore things that are not so wonderful. Be patient. Don't expect this to happen overnight. And then relax and release the situation to God. In my experience, this approach only works about 100% of the time. Here's some recommended articles on tinnitus to give you a better understanding. I'll leave this for a moment so you can copy these or write them down. They all are the HTTP, by the way, is the same as starting with www. So it would be www. Ezine articles, E Z I N E or E Zine, it's like a magazine, E electronic magazine, E Zine articles dot com forward slash six three five three four six five. The next one is the same www dot E Zine articles dot com forward slash six three five three five seven two. And you have them there, you can copy those down. Some great articles that you can go read to give you additional information. I formed the Tinnitus Control Center and we're giving you this presentation for your benefit. I'm Dr. Charles Smith Deal. My wife is Dr. Deborah Smith Deal. We're specialists in anxiety relief techniques and we run the Tinnitus Control Center.com. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.